Chad Hennings played nine seasons as a defensive lineman for the Dallas Cowboys. And before that, he attended the U.S. Air Force Academy and was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Chad believed his own work ethic was the reason for his success. But when his two-year-old son was suddenly fighting for his life, Chad could no longer rely on his own strength. Well, joining me right now is Chad Hennings. Chad, thank you so much for being here. Thank that's you, a, that's a firm handshake right there. Thank you. <laughs> well, take us back to 1988 when you were drafted into the NFL. What? Take us back to that moment. <sighs> for me, it was a lot of uh, emotional turmoil. So I had made a commitment prior, uh, two years prior, when I was going into my junior year, that once you go into your junior year at a service academy, you owe a minimum of a five-year military commitment. I yep. wanted to fly jets, so my commitment was up to eight years, but I also wanted to play football in the NFL. Mm. So I had this, this conflict, but I made a commitment. I gave my word, so I knew that deep down I'd have to put football, any chance of playing football on the yep. back burner and fulfill my military commitment. So yeah. I went on to become an A-10 fighter pilot. Wow, so you were a fighter pilot. So they had to wait for you a little bit, the Dallas Cowboys. They waited five years. Well, technically, I, I consider it a God thing. After the first Gulf War, which I flew 45 missions into Northern Iraq in support of Operation Provide Comfort, wow. our military went through a reduction in force, which they waived not only for me, but across the board individuals that wanted to separate from the military. Yeah. So I resigned my regular commission, took a reserve commission, and went on to play with the Dallas Cowboys. That's amazing. Well, what was that transition like coming from, you know, Know, being a fighter pilot to being a NFL player for one of the greatest teams. One of the things, though, you know, I, I had learned that a lot of the similarities that helped me make me a success as a fighter pilot, you know, the, the preparation for a mission, the sense of teamwork, the flying with your wingman, how to think tactically, strategically, mm -hmm. those universal principles translated very well into going into the NFL. Although I was living in England, my last duty assignment was in England where the mean average summer temperature would be 78 degrees, and when it would get above 90, people would you know, they die because no air conditioning. Yeah. But then going to play in an NFL training camp at Dallas or in, in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. where it's 95, 98, 100 degrees. So it, physically, it was a challenge. Wow. Well, let's go back to the moment in your life where your two-year-old son was sick. What Talk about that. Well, what happened? It was just about six weeks after we had just won our third Super Bowl in four years. We beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in Super Bowl 30. Mm -hmm. um, my son chased for just totally out of the blue gets a fever, gets sick as, as young parents with our only child, take him to the pediatrician, but it beginning to progress where it became an autoimmune illness where we didn't know what was really wow. the matter with him. He'd yeah. strike high fevers, rash, um, swelling of joints uh, all over his body. Yeah. And it was a time for me where it was the first time in my life where I couldn't fix it mm. as a father, as a man. Yeah. And, and, and I struggled with that from a, both a, a faith standpoint, who is God, and, you know, as just as a husband and as a father. Yeah. So how did that affect you? I mean, what did you learn from that experience? Well, I learned who God was. Mm. And I learned that, that it's the aspect of my identity is not what I did. You know, a lot of times I would put my identity that, hey, I'm a fighter pilot mm -hmm. or I'm a professional athlete. Yeah. But what you do does not define who you are. And I learned that the character and nature of God, that no matter what we go through in life, that God still loves us. That he loved us enough to send his son, Jesus Christ, to come into this world to die on the cross for us. Mm and that I can't earn his love through my works, my you know, commitment, um, that Jesus did everything on the cross for me. Yeah, yeah. And for me, that was the saving grace that I learned and the freedom that I learned of what it means to walk the Christian life in his kingdom today. Yeah, and from those lessons that you learned, you started a ministry. What's the ministry? I started a men's ministry called Wingmen. Wingmen. You can go to wingmen.org, where it, it was that whole aspect, because what I struggled with was to be able to be transparent with other men that, hey, I'm struggling, that I don't have it all together. Yeah. And to encourage those transparent, Christ-centered, masculine relationships with other men. And that's why I also joined the Board of Promise Keepers, mm -hmm. which we're getting ready to roll out here July 31st, 2020 at AT&T Stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, where God's team plays, <laughs> America's team plays the Dallas Cowboys. But tickets are on sale for that right wow, now. Okay. And guys can go there. We're, we're wanting to kind of start that, that, that spark to mm -hmm. encourage men, it's okay to be masculine, Yeah. to be men of God. Yeah, why do you think it's so hard for men specifically to be vulnerable to other men? Why do you think that is? Culture tells us that you know, to be a man means you have to be like Gary Cooper at High Noon you know, standing mm. in the street. You have to have it together, or John Rambo. Yeah, yeah. But um, 
but that's the antithesis of what we're called. We need to be we need to be vulnerable with those close relationships. I call them wingmen, those individuals where you can be transparent, where you can walk lockstep together. Because every time that I would fly a mission, whether it be a training mission or a uh, mission in combat, mm -hmm. I would always fly with another wingman. I would never be solo. Yeah. And that's how we're supposed to execute as men our mission that God has tasked each and every one of us with on this earth. Yeah. Well, you've done a lot in your life. I mean, what is your what would you say is your greatest accomplishment? My greatest accomplishment, I think, first and foremost, that I took that step to acknowledge Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Second to that would be that I am the husband of my wife of mm -hmm. 29 years, Tammy. Okay. And then I am the uh, father of two beautiful kids, Chase and Brenna. Yeah. And that I have, uh, you know, that's, I, that, that's my top three. Yeah, is that, that enough? Yeah, totally. You know, no, but those it, are but good. But it's none of the things, and I go to that, it's not a yeah. you know, fighter, pilot, football player, you know, Super Bowl champion. That's just things that I did. That's mm -hmm. not who I am. Yeah, definitely. Well, how is your son today? He's doing great. He graduated from college three years ago. He's gamefully employed, thank yeah. you, Lord, <laughs> and doing a phenomenal job. He loves the Lord, both he and my and my daughter. And I think that's you know another great accomplishment that we had as parents is to prepare them for the world. Yeah, definitely. Well, what would you say to the viewers out there, men out there specifically, who think they don't need anyone or they don't need God. What would you say to them? I said, don't don't buy into that that at that aspect, that thought process that the world tells you, because a lot of guys end up dealing with shame because of things that have been done to them mm -hmm. as as young men, maybe potentially abused, sexually abused, verbally abused, physically abused, or things that we have done in, in our youthful indiscretions that we have. I think we all have maybe had those uh, prodigal son moments. Mm -hmm. But the Lord loves us. Yeah. No matter what you do. Confess by your mouth, Jesus is the Lord. If you believe in your heart that he raised from the dead, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. That God wants you back. Yeah. And the thing is that we need other men to hold each other accountable and, and to be able to be transparent with, to be able to get through this thing we call life. Yeah. Because it's a challenge. Yeah. And, our, and our battle's not against flesh and blood. It's against the things in the spiritual realm, the yeah. powers and principalities in the Definitely. spiritual realm. Definitely. So you got, okay, so what are the ministries that you're involved in? Wingmen? Wingmen Ministries and then Promise Keepers. Promise Keepers. So you can go to wingmen.org or promisekeepers.org. Awesome. Well, we Chad. We keep it simple. Yeah. Thank you so much. This has been so good. If you want to learn more about Chad's ministry, uh, just go to wingmen.org. And if you're interested in Promise Keepers, go to promisekeepers.org. Chad, thank you so much for being here. It's a, it's a blessing and blessings on all your endeavors. Thank you.